decided to stop by today again and to make a very quick conversation with you and to just speak words into your life uh, that will bring clarity in areas that you need it. All right. Um, this conversation is to singles, is to married people, um, and it will just be a blessing to your thinking partner. And let me quickly say this, if you realize all of these weeks since I've been teaching uh, and making some exposition using the Word of God and uh, bringing clarity, what we are focused to do is to focus on your thinking. Let me quickly say this, that every marriage is a reality of the thought pattern of the parties involved, all right? So that your marriage is not going to be any different from how you think. Your thinking pattern is going to produce, you know, what the marriage reality would be. All right, so when I bring these thoughts based on the Word of God, what we're trying to do is we're trying to condition your thinking because if we're not able to condition your thinking, we can't condition your conduct. And if we can't conduct, uh, uh, condition your conduct, we, we can't give you, you know, the right experience. So the right experience flows from, first of all, having the right pattern of thought. All right, why shouldn't you give up in any circumstance, particularly when you're married? So to the single, this is a note of instruction for when you're married. To the married, this is a note of instruction for now. And let me quickly say this. Uh, this is why I'm bringing this note of instruction uh, to say that um, for every marriage, like I, I read yesterday and explained, for every marriage, you have a situation where uh, things would happen that would require that would require grit, that would require that you hang on, that would require that you don't give up. All right, there's no marriage in the world. So if any minister, person, or individual says to you that they have a situation in their marriage where you know everything is perfect, they're lying. All right, so that um, you would have situations that you would have to deal with stuff, you would have to hold on at certain times, you would have to, you know, overcome stuff uh, because stuff is going to be thrown at you. That's just the nature of life, all right? So our uh, imperfection is going to cause for things like that to happen in our marriages, all right? So like I read yesterday and explained from scriptures, uh, marriages do not fail because circumstances come. Marriages fail because people do not have the right foundation on which to respond to the circumstance. Because the moment you have the right foundation to respond to the circumstance, you discountenance, discount, and diminish the trial. All right, so your, your trial is, 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 is as big uh, as your uh, lack of capacity to handle it. That's why the Bible says that if your strength fails in the day of adversity, your strength is small. All right, so your strength, your strength is what adversity comes to expose. So what happens is a strength of character or strength of thought necessary for succeeding in marriage is where we must show up energy. That's where people miss it. All right. So people just do one bear or do whatever we do in celebration of a marriage and forget that uh, celebration is not it. All right. Anybody can celebrate marriage. Anybody can choose to be married. Anybody can just walk down the aisle. Anybody can go to the registry. But the issue is the strength we bring to bear is a mental kind of strength, all right? And it's a revelational kind of strength. It's not just, it's not just, it's, uh, when I say mental, it's not, you know, people have positive affirmation that has not worked. You know, I will not fail. I will not fail. I will not fail. Thank you. It's not just about saying I will not fail. I will not fail. What is the condition, you know, of the mind of the one saying I will not fail? All right? So, um, the Bible says something very simple in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. That's why I'm going to hinge uh, and just say a few things uh, before I, I, I stop today's video. It says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. Alright, so that you come to the point where you realize that marriage is going to be the outcome of consistent sowing. Marriage is going to be the outcome of consistent sowing. You know, because a lot of times what happens is people get married and expect that things will just work. So at the first signal that things aren't exactly what they thought it should be, they begin to give up, they begin to feel discouraged, they begin to feel like, no, 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 I didn't expect that. Oh, why is that happening to me? No, the Bible says do not be weary in well doing. It means there will be a temptation to be weary. It means there will be a temptation to give up. It means there will be a temptation to draw back. It means there will be a temptation to say, you know what, I beg, I don't do it again. No, 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 no. The Bible says, I recognize the trial. I recognize the temptation not to do again. Well, here's the deal. He said, now, if you want to understand what, 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 what the Bible is saying in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, you backtrack to verse 6. 
Yeah, verse 6, and what does he say? He said, let him, no, 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 uh, you backtrack to verse 7. He said, be not deceived, God is no more. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he reap. In essence, the outcome of your life is a product of what you put in. Alright, so if you put in giving up, the outcome will be a giving up uh, outcome. Like, life will give up on you too. Alright, so it's so important. You know, then it goes on in verse 8 before you come to 9. I know I started with 9. He said, for he that soweth to his flesh, of the flesh shall reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting. Or life everlasting. Alright, what is he saying here? He said you must come to the point where you realize that your input in that marriage is what will determine the experience. Because a lot of times people want to have an experience they have not made input for. Let me quickly say this. You can't have an experience in marriage that you have not made input for. It's like a farmer who wants to reap what they have not sown. If you are not into farming tomatoes, for instance, you don't expect at the end of the harvest season to reap tomatoes. You cannot. All right. So it's so important to ask yourself, what are you going to sow? Or if you are a married person, what are you sowing into that marriage? You know, for some people, for instance, they have been sowing a lot of discord in their own marriage. I mean, their mouth is sharp. Your mouth is so sharp, your spouse cannot survive. You know, you bring uh, inconvenient sarcasm. Or you, you know, some people just, what they contribute the most is anger. Anger. You just bring anger to the table. What are you bringing into that marriage? What are you sowing into that marriage? That's what you must ask. In fact, this applies to a lot of people's relationship. What are you sowing in the relationship? What, what are you planting? You know, you say, do not be weary in well-doing. Have you become so tired of doing well? Have you come to the point where you say, ah, the way my husband spoke to me last week, me, I'm never going to greet him again. Ah, uh, the way my wife talked to me, I'll never forgive her again. He said, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, you will reap, you will reap if you faint not. So you have people who have become weary in well-doing. You have people who have begun to sow wicked seeds and expecting good harvest. All right, you know what the Bible says, yeah? He said, a bad, a bad seed cannot produce good fruits. A bad seed cannot produce good fruit. So that's why I said, do not be really well doing. Let me be frank with you. Your marriage is just going to churn out a harvest of what you guys are sowing. And you may say to me, oh, Charlie, but my husband isn't doing well. Or my wife isn't doing well. Do you follow my person to, to lose clothes? You don't undo your clothes because somebody else is doing that. All right. See, if your spouse is not doing well and you choose not to do well, you bury the marriage. Somebody's got to lead the way. Somebody's got to start the revolution. Somebody's got to start the revival. All right? So that's what you must do. You must come to the point where you make up your mind to say that the seeds I will sow in this marriage will be good seed. You must make up your mind to say my own contribution to this marriage because whatever you do or your spouse does is a seed. And we are going to reap the harvest of the seed. So you must make up your mind that your own contribution in that home. That's why I said do not be weary. Because the temptation to be weary is there. The temptation to say, you know what? My spouse isn't even trying. My spouse is not doing this. They are not doing that. In fact, that's one of the commonest killers in marriage. Comparing yourselves one to another, the Bible says you have become fools. Why? You are focusing on another when you are not focused on you. Because you need to focus on what you are doing. You need to focus on what you are contributing. You need to focus on what you are bringing to the table. He said, do not be weary in well-doing. For in due season. Let me say this to you. Due season always comes. And when due season comes, what happens is it will give you a harvest of your contribution. So in that marriage, what should you be contributing? You should be contributing the peace of the marriage. You should be contributing the forward movement of the marriage. You should be contributing, you know, the love of the marriage. You should be contributing the romance of the marriage. You should be bringing something to the table that is able to produce results. And may say to me, Ocholi, you don't understand, my spouse is difficult. Do not be weary well doing. Ocholi, you don't understand, my spouse, Satan has him. Do not be weary in well doing. You may say to me, Ocholi, you don't understand, the devil talks to my wife directly. I mean, the way she manifests in this home. Do not be weary in well doing. For if you do not faint, you will reap in due season. Due season always comes. That's the truth. So you must go back to the point where you, you realize that the best thing to do is to contribute something that will give you a good harvest in your union. All right? A lot of married people need to read this. Because a lot of married people are so reactive. I mean, you say, no, 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 no. The way my husband spoke to me yesterday, ah, in fact, 
Can you imagine she forgot my birthday? Can you imagine he forgot our anniversary? Me, I'm no longer doing so, so and so. Then people begin to make decisions. Never will I, never will I. The more you make decisions that would not save the union, the more the union goes down. And let me quickly say this to you. If there be one person amongst two of you who consistently sows a good seed, two things will happen. Number one, the seed will encourage the marriage to stand. Number two, the other party will become challenged. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody did something so rightly, you felt ashamed for the things you were doing wrong? Because sometimes what is lacking in a union is the partner who will challenge the other one through their conduct. Your conduct needs to challenge and make your partner sit up. All right, so be so consistent with your good contribution to the union that it doesn't just help the union, it makes your partner to sit up. It makes your partner come to the point where they say, wow, she's trying to. You mean after all like this, she isn't complaining? You mean after all like this, she, she, he didn't lash out? You mean after all I did, they begin to come to the point of self-evaluation, self-judgment. They begin to come to the point of challenge. They come to the point of positive pressure. All right? I'm going to give you an example and just close this very short broadcast. We did a no complaint challenge on our couples forum some time ago. And we asked the couples to go 24 hours and not complain. A lot of us found it very difficult to do just across 24 hours to complain about nothing. But you know what it produced? It made all the couples involved realize how much they were complaining. I mean, it made everybody realize that there was more complaint coming out than communication. Why? We got weary or we easily get weary in well-doing and forget that doing well is actually the way to be well. So you know what happened? People began to strive not to complain for those 24 hours with their spouse. And you know what it produced? It produced positive emotion. It produced, you know, a wholesome environment. Because everybody began to realize that, oh, 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 I've been complaining so much and reconditioning the atmosphere of the home. You know, what happened then is that you become weary in well doing. So you don't reap a good harvest. All right? So do not be weary. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Do not be weary in well doing. Because if you, if you don't get weary in well doing, what happens is you will reap a due harvest if you faint not. So I came here to encourage you. Even if you're single, make up your mind. That as you get married, all right, that you are going to go into marriage with a desire not to be weary in well doing, to make doing good, I mean, to, to make contributing good to your union a default mode or default conduct. And these things don't happen through the emotional space. This thing happens through the space of decision that I have decided that I will do good, all right, that I will respond to my partner positively, all right, that I will not be weary in well doing. Why? If I'm not weary in what we're doing, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to reap a harvest if I do not faint. All right, that's what I stopped by here to just quickly say to you. I hope you were blessed. Share this video with somebody else. And let's just condition our minds to succeed. In not fulfilled marriages, we can excel. We must not fail. God bless you today.